In this video, we'll see how the inverse variance method can be used to combine relative risk values and odds ratios in meta-analysis. We will also see how to interpret and generate a forest plot in R. A meta-analysis is a method to pool the results from several different studies. We will here illustrate how the variance method, also called inverse variance weights, works to pool the relative risks or odds ratios from different studies. Although you can pull other things with a method, like proportions, correlation coefficients, and much more. Note, all calculations in this video assume a 95% confidence interval, where we can use the z-score value of 1.96. We usually summarize the data in a table like this, from studies where we like to calculate the relative risk or the odds ratio. For cohort studies where we follow exposed and unexposed people over time and check if they get the disease or not, we usually want to calculate the relative risk that we have discussed in the previous video. And for case controlled studies where we collect a number of individuals who have a certain disease and use similar healthy individuals as controls, we cannot calculate the relative risk. We then usually calculate the odds ratio to estimate the relative risk for rare diseases. Suppose that we have collected three different odds ratios, and they associate the 95% confidence intervals from three different studies but with similar study designs. One simple way to pull these three odds ratios would be to calculate the average of these three values. However, the confidence interval of the third study is much more narrower compared to the other two studies. This means that we are more certain of the estimated odds ratio in this study. It would therefore make more sense to put more weight on this odds ratio when we pool the three odds ratios. The reason why a study has a narrower confidence interval is generally due that it is based on the largest sample size. One can see this as we like to put more weight on studies that are based on more individuals, because we like to put more trust in such studies. The standard error of the logged odds ratio is calculated like this. If we have access to a table like this, we can plug in the numbers in the corresponding elements and do the math. However, in some cases, we might just have access to the odds ratios and their associated confidence intervals. So, how do we then calculate the standard errors? From the previous video about the odds ratio, we know that the 95% confidence interval of the odds ratio is calculated like this. And this is how the lower and upper limits of that confidence interval are calculated. If we for example know the lower limit of the confidence interval and the odds ratio, we should be able to calculate the standard error. If we take the natural log of both sides of, for example, the lower limit, we'll get the following equation. If we now solve this equation for the standard error of the logged odds ratio, we will get the following equation to calculate the standard error based on the lower limit of the 95% confidence interval. Similarly, this is how the standard error of the relative risk is calculated based on the values in the table. And this is how the 95% confidence interval is calculated as we had discussed in the video about the relative risk. The logged lower limit of that interval is calculated like this. To calculate the standard error of the logged relative risk, we basically use the same formula as for calculating the corresponding thing for the standard error of the logged odds ratio except that we here plug in the relative risk. To illustrate how to do the calculations, we'll here use the inverse variance method to pull the odds ratios from the three different studies. We first calculate the natural log of the odds ratios, so that we get the logged odds ratios. Next, we calculate the standard errors of the logged odds ratios with the following formula where we plug in the lower limit of the confidence interval, the odds ratio, and do the math. Then we plug in this value here, and do the same calculations for the other two odds ratios. Next, we calculate the weights by the inverse of the squared standard errors.
Note that the denominator can also be seen as the variance of the estimated odds ratio, which explains why the method is called inverse variance. Let's calculate the weights of the three odds ratios and put them here. Since the odds ratio from the third study has the highest weight, it will have the most impact on the pooled odds ratio. Let's sum the weights. Finally, we multiply the logged odds ratios with the weights and put the products in this column and sum these products. We can now calculate the natural log of the pooled odds ratio where we plug in the sum of the products and the sum of the weights and do the math. If you now take e to the power of the log pooled odds ratio, we'll get the pooled odds ratio. If you combine these odds ratios, we'll get the following odds ratio. Let's put the values up here. We'll now calculate the 95% confidence interval for the pooled odds ratio. The standard error of the pooled logged odds ratio is calculated like this. If we plug in the sum of the weights and do the math, we see that the standard error of the pooled logged odds ratio is about 0 0.153. To calculate the 95% confidence interval, we plug in the logged pooled odds ratio and the corresponding standard error. 1.96 is the critical value from the standard normal distribution that we use to create a 95% confidence interval. This is how the lower limit of the confidence interval is calculated. And this is how the upper limit is calculated. Our interval therefore goes from 1.03 to 1.87. Note that this interval does not include the value 1, which means that the pooled odds ratio is significantly greater than 1. Remember that none of the odds ratios from the three different studies were significantly different from 1 because all confidence intervals include the value 1. This interval is much narrower than the intervals from the original studies, which is due to that when we pool a lot of odds ratios, we become more certain about the estimated pooled odds ratio because it is based on more data. This is one major advantage with meta studies. They can identify strong significant associations by pooling several studies with weak or no significant associations. If it would create a so-called forest plot, it would look something like this. These lines show the confidence intervals of the three studies, which all include the reference value 1, which means that the odds ratios in these studies are not significantly different from 1. The boxes represent the estimated odds ratios from the three studies. The sizes of the boxes tell how much weight each study has on the pooled odds ratio. Since this box is relatively large, it tells us that the odds ratio from study C will have more impact on the pooled odds ratio compared to the other odds ratios. The pooled odds ratio is illustrated by a diamond. We see that it does not intercept the reference line, which means that the odds ratio is significantly different from 1, since it is to the right hand side of the reference line we can conclude that it is significantly larger than 1. Our previous calculations were based on a fixed effect model. A fixed effect model assumes that the odds ratios from all studies are identical and that the variation seen is due to random effects. A fixed effect model is appropriate for similar studies. A random model assumes that the studies are drawn from a population of studies with different odds ratios, where the goal is to estimate the mean of the distribution of the odds ratios. A random model is appropriate for studies with different study designs. We will now see how to generate the following simple forest plot in R, which is a free statistical software tool. To generate this plot, I will here use the metaphor package, which we first need to load with the following code. Before loading this package, you first need to install it if you have not already done that. Next, we enter our odds ratios, 
and the lower limits of the 95% confidence intervals. Then we calculate the standard errors of the logged odds ratios with the same formula as we used previously. Then we use the RMA function to calculate the pooled odds ratio and its 95% confidence interval, where we plug in the logged odds ratios, the standard errors, and say that we like to compute in this example a fixed effect model. Next, we generate the forest plot with the function forest, where we plug in the previous output and say that we like to take e to the power of the log odds ratios so that we get the odds ratios in the plot. We here place a reference line at 1 and place an appropriate label on the x axis, some names for the studies, and a label of the pooled odds ratio. Again, Note that all three original studies had 95% confidence intervals that include the reference line, whereas the pooled odds ratio does not include this reference line. By pooling the results from several studies, we have shown that the pooled odds ratio is significantly larger than 1. If you like to further explore the metaphor package, there is a function that can calculate the effect size based on raw data which means that we then do not need to first manually calculate the odds ratios and the standard errors. You can also create the funnel plot and much more. This was the end of this video about how the inverse variance method is used in meta-analysis and how to create a forest plot. Thanks for watching.